this beautiful Sunday night, we are coming to you live from our Nile Serena studios. This is Perspective with Josephine Karunji. A very good evening and a warm welcome to Perspective with Josephine Karunji. Welcome to our first episode of the show this year. And tonight we are starting off with... Uh, a topic on living as a mixed race here in Uganda. Well, to start our show, let's play a clip of an interview that we had with one of our guests earlier this week. His friends call him Chia Kabale. He was born in Kabale, the home of his parents. Mino Abdulaziz's great-grandparents were among the many Indians the British brought to Uganda in the 1930s to construct infrastructure like Kabale Hospital. They intermarried with indigenous Pachiga and gave birth to Mino's parents. Mino took the color of his great-grandparents, and that is where his troubles start. He has to constantly explain who he is. You are an Indian, but why do you behave like you are Chiga? And I, I, really, <laughs> I, really, I, really, I really feel not comfortable. We grew up like other Muchiga, the way other, other Muchiga. Even if me, the way I behave, I behave like a true Muchiga. I don't, if, if, you are not, if you are not my friend, I will come face to face with you, I will tell you, you are not my friend. Mino says even his friends make uncharitable comments. They unwittingly remind him that he is different. Uh, at times it comes as a joke, but remember a joke has a, has a base. Maybe you can say, Mino, you are to the Korea chapati. You get the thing. You find that a person you grew up with also has, has inferiority complex. He has that thing of saying, even if we are together, you are not one of us. And then the stereotypes. Most of the culture, they think that, uh, like us, Bachotara, we should be mechanics and truck drivers. So you find that... Uh, even if you are to educate your kid, you look at P7, if he goes far, he's senior four. Let's say, for example, at school, hmm? most people just, just when he goes like to higher school, what the, the, the insults, the what, so the guy just becomes, he says, ah, you know what, let me do the, the, the chichotara way. I will go in the garage, the guy wakes up. He has never been to India, cannot speak the language, and only picks some of it from watching Indian movies. However hard he tries to fit in, there are always comments that remind him that it is not a possibility just yet. We went to the border. The guy was asking me in English. So I would, I would talk in Uganda, but the guy would reply in English. From, from town to Gaza is a very long distance. So... We converse, he was very excited and what. Some people, are, but on, along the way, he kept quiet for a very long time, period of time. Do you know what he told me? He told me, Sebu, we all get to Uganda, Chirunji. We are going to go to We are going to go to the It really made. Now, this is the guy. We have been together. We have been conversing. But he's not convinced that you are Ugandan. Mino was married to a Muchiga woman and they had three daughters. One day, he left her with their eldest child at a restaurant to eat while he went to do some shopping. The time I came back, I found a, a woman with a police officer standing on, standing with her. They were asking, if this is your baby, you try to you breastfeed her. It is a real scenario, it happened. You breastfeed until I came in. But the good thing, the, the, most of the kids try to resemble me. So when I entered, the, that's when she introduced it, this is the father. So you find that even the kids, like the first born and the second born, uh, um, and the third born, they are all much, they tend to, they have my blood, conk blood. So at times we would walk together and uh, people would start murmuring around. Is it the her wife? What are their connection? He is fluent in Ruchiga, Kinyaranda, Kifumbira, and Luganda. Luganda. 
His worst experience so far has been during the registration for national identity cards. He says the person in charge was extremely hostile. Guys go back to India, what you don't... The, 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 the most thing he told me that was so hurting was one thing. In today's world, you cannot tell someone that you guys, you don't want us to marry your women. That's why you are going to suffer. You want your women to get married to your fellow, fellow Bahindi. You get the thing. So we are not going to give you. If you guys want citizenship, let us marry your women. He eventually got an ID, but when he misplaced it, the process to get a new one has been hell. It has been over a year of running back and forth trying to get a new ID. But Mino is coping somehow. He refuses to live with his head covered in shame because society has decided that people like him do not belong. I really push myself, but there, there are those people who, are, who cannot do that. To those people who are, do, are not, like, I am not saying aggressive. Who, aggressive with life. So this, from, from here to Chireka, maybe it would be like 2,000. The guy tells you 5,000. That is when now you see that there is that, hmm? that, that, that segregation, like they, they are pushing, they, they see you as an investor, as what? I'm charging you to go up and to have a very good scent. I'm charging you to go up and to have a very good scent. I'm charging you to go up and to have a very good scent. I'm charging you to go up and to have a very good scent. Mbaka <laughs> Nabiranga there are people like him, and then there are those whose mixed stress is more elaborate. He thinks that while they also face challenges, they are a little better off than him. You may think that Chotara, who's black and white, who's a bit, you see the blood is too much mixed. They, 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 think, they may think this guy's from Somalia, so they start to relate to you from Somalia, from what? from uh, Eritrea, from where, so that, that is the mix. So they, they, they may think this is African, you see. But when you look someone who's too much of mix, they say this is, you are Indian. We wish, we'd, I'm talking on behalf of many I've talked to, we wish, and the experience I've had, we wish the community, our community, because we also contribute a lot, should appreciate us and not like, uh, Look at us as a, as something, something as if, because today I cannot go to India and say I'm an Indian and they, they accept me. So if Uganda and say we don't we don't know you, the other guy the Indian says we don't know you. So where do you expect me to go? Well, joining us in the studio uh, this evening is Mino Abdulaziz. Thank you very much for sharing your story, Mino. Uh, Mino is an illustrator, an animator, and a graphics designer. And then also Rani Ismail, Assistant Director, Department of Communication and Public Affairs. She has worked with Parliament since 2002, and she's mixed dress of Samia and Indian. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming to the show. Oh, oh Rani, you were watching <laughs> yes, Mino's story, <laughs> and you were nodding at every point. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking? I think he's said most of the things that I think about, but it also depends on personalities, cultures, how you've grown up, and how you have also taken initiative to mingle and join others. 
What what has been? What is your story? I was born in Tororo. I am very Eastern, and um, I grew up in grew raised in boarding school. I went to Iganga Girls. I went to Mariam High School. I went to City High School. So I have. I've got many friends, and uh, that made me grow into the society, sense of belonging. I got my sense of belonging when I was still young. So I haven't really felt the way he says. I haven't, um, I haven't been mocked by society, because after getting my education, I got into a good institution. Parliament as an institution. The first speaker was Indian, and um, perhaps education makes a difference. How do you identify? I. That's the question. I'm neither here nor there. I, I know when I <laughs> ask Mino, you know, you know, how do you identify? Mm -hmm. uh, as myself, uh, being a. Uh, Coming from the Western, I feel that uh, identify the, the issues. How, how do you identify yourself? Who are you? Are you? Okay. Yes. Okay, me, I identify myself as a Mchiga. And I've always been proud to be a Mchiga because uh, whenever I go somewhere, I would first talk in the local language, the Mchiga language. Because when I grew up in Kabali, everyone. I grew up like a Mchiga, every friends, family, what, every even behavior. So I identify myself too much as a Mchiga. Could you could you be the one, perhaps, looking at these things and, and putting yourself in a certain place and thinking um, about yourself more than how other people view you? Could you get have gotten it wrong somehow? No, I don't think I've got it wrong because why I say this, you know, there's a, that sudden change of scenario. When as, when I was in Kabali. Everything was w was okay. We'd walk on the street, meet people, talk. Everything was a bit fair. Was okay hmm? with the guys there. But when it came suddenly, change when I came here because uh, as a, as an ordinary person, I was also looking for ch the change of life. Things changed dramatically. I found a very new scene because I was used to that scene of Kabali. So now this this is a hostile environment. Uh, you're, you're up to people would look you differently, like the way people are looking me in Kabat. Because now, like here, I'm just an ordinary guy. I use everything. Like an ordinary person, I take taxis, borders, I walk on the, trees, the streets. This is, uh, this is where you find the challenges a lot. Well, she, she doesn't really identify with you when you, when you speak about these challenges. But what, what happened when we posted that we're going to host you on the show? And people saw, because you know you look more Indian than you know than you look Ugandan, the comments that came up, and I'd, I'd like to read some of them so that maybe, Rani, you can get a picture of, of where he comes from when he's talking about how he's, he feels rejected in Uganda. Somebody wrote and said, I will never treat those fools as Ugandans, and I pray that Uganda gets another Amin Dada who will chase those morons from our country. Another person says, they treat local Ugandans badly from their respective areas of work. Finally, they don't love Africans in general. That's why they can't allow their daughters to marry an African, but because they, uh, okay, they, like, there's so many areas, I couldn't read the whole thing. Another person says they are already discriminatory. Anyone black allowed next to their ladies, those guys only smile to blacks when they want something. And we'll continue to look at some of those comments, and I'm sure some of them will be running on the screen um, as we continue this conversation. Rani, what do you think, hearing what people think about? Um, I think everybody's entitled to what they think, but also experience. Uganda has a long history from where we've come from. And um, I would say that if you're Indian, if you're mixed Indian, you have more problems than if you're mixed white and bl I mean white and and a local. Why is that? Um, because, as I say, the history, but also 
the character of Indians. So people take them to be mean, you know, they are very isolated, they, are, they, they have a conservative nature. So when we are mixed, people tend to think we are like them, but that's not the case. No. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So I, I wanted to respond to that guy who said that he wishes Amin would be around to to clear the mess up. <laughs> Let me. Uh, if if Amin that time cleared the mess, he wouldn't have been here. So which means also Amin recognized us because the true Indians left and left us behind. Even the, the Amin couldn't uh, he couldn't chase us. That's why we are here. That's why we are still here. Believe me, my parents were, the, were born in the areas of I Amin, mean, even myself. Why, do, why are we still here? That is my question. If, even if I Amin mean is to come back again, may his soul rest, rest in peace, he will take care of the Indians and leave us behind. I think that is the, I could respond to that question like that. And the second question of saying that uh, we, we, we don't marry, I think today's marriage, uh, when you look at society, it's about love and I had a Michiga woman she was so, we, 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 we lived very happily. So I don't think, we, why, why is it that uh, you, if you, you talk to the lady and everything goes well, I think that is your own arrangement. It doesn't mean that I have to chip in and, and, dis, and, and, dis, and maybe destroy everything for you. So I think that is not the case. Rani, you want to say something? Just, I, I just wanted to, uh, to, to supplement. <laughs> I think marriage is about, it's very personal, you know, it's a personal matter. And if you, if you look around, there's a, a lot of intermarriage, quite many. But as he says, it's how you approach it. Okay. So to me, so I there's, think... So there's no rule or law that yeah. says... There's no rule or law that says that. another thing, you see, that thing really, it's uh, w w what is really causing the problem. Because you see now this person, when you look at him, his interest in the woman, in a half-caste woman, isn't oh, uh, an Indian woman. Now what if they marry again and produce someone like me? That you is going to have uh -huh. the same problem. Yeah, he is going to have the same problem. You see there is that, uh, they, they want the, I mean call it selfish, he wants to, to satisfy his, 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 his desires but doesn't think what will come out, what will be. Now, when they produce that child, unfortunately something happens to the parents. Believe me, you'll have another mean on the streets of Kampala. When he moves around, people start. Uh, every time I've had this conversation with you from our interview, and even now, I actually saw tears welling up in your eyes when the, the clip was playing. It, it seems to really um, affect you so badly. I wanted to ask, are there support groups that you, do you have support groups where you maybe come together and you talk up and you help each other? Or is it every man for himself and the few who can speak up do? I think as he had, he had pointed out, we, we have, even in the society itself, there are problems, hindrances, because you realize most of our people don't get a lot, I mean, Education is a problem. So self-esteem definitely gets into it. Yes. And once there's no self-esteem, you realize the community does not grow. So self of belonging and also diversification of the community is hindered. But um, if I look around now, many of the mixed race are educated and they are coming up. We do have a lot of, um, we get together, we get together in not partying, or, but how to develop ourselves. And then also we need to get to, to the society. You see, you cannot be there when you are when you're mixed race and you're on your own. You won't grow. You won't grow. No. But I Mina, mean, I want to hear your thoughts on this, but let's take a short break and then we'll start with that when we come back.
Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Well, Mino, before we took a break, I was asking if you have support groups where you, you help each other and, you know. Okay. At, uh, at the moment, we don't have, since we are already scattered around, and at the moment, people f get scared to make those support groups. You know, when, 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 when you make a support group, you have to register it, you have to go where, you have, people have to sign those. So you find that now, it becomes also a problem. A group of Indians are starting to, 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 to make a, a big supportive group. Association. Uh, associations for what in Uganda? You see, the, the moment, the, like she said, it, it, it depends on one's person. The moment we are growing up, the moment the, we see the way the society was, handing, was handling us, eh, is the way we, we, we take things to be. Because today I'm not going to make a, so a, 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 an organization to see that whenever I bring it up, they'll, have, they'll always have to be questioned, as, who are you, where do you come from? Are you sure you are, for, are you Uganda? You don't look Uganda. Why? Those, those, we are fed up with those questions. What if would you like to see happen? Ab about associations or about... For, for, for you? For, for me, only, the, the, not only for me, for my fellow... Yes, for you and your fe fellow. And my, my, my children is one thing. I want my child today, when he walks in the passport's office, yes. it becomes easier or an, uh, an ID office. I don't want, like, they, they give me money or what. Let it be easier. Like, if Mino and Mugarura are going to get a, an ID or an, a passport, let it be easier than, <coughs> than to me. Than what it's been like for you? For the, as, like Mugarula, how is doing it? Why should I be asked so many questions which I, I don't have answers to? Where do your grandfathers <laughs> came from? Why, did, why are you, do you look <laughs> like that? Those, we, we don't, we, I don't really, really like, because I don't think I just, uh, Indian just wakes up one day and says, do you know what, now I'm a Luchiga. Starts speaking Luchiga, starts going. When I come to you and introduce you to myself, uh, I'm a Muchiga, I come from Kavare, I have come here, I need to do, to, to do my documents, ask me relevant questions. The way you'd ask Mujisha Mutabazi or anyone else, don't start asking me where do you come from, why are you here, why are you brown? Me, me to the extent, <laughs> when the, the, to the extent, when they ask me, sometime I was in a, in a taxi, then I was conversing with my fellow Muchiga on phone, some lady turns to me, are you really a Muchiga? You don't look a Muchiga. Eh? Then they, 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 they were, but she was speaking, we were conversing in Muchiga. So the answers I gave her was, no uh, Then she asked, she asked me, Kandi what about your hair? I said, Nyue Nkarikara Angandarikara. At times, you really, do, you, you take it as fun. It is I used, it, so yes. I, I, I want us, when we, do, we, we when you sit somewhere in a group of people, let us, let's feel comfortable, so like the way Mujisha would do that. Yes, Rani. Yeah, uh, well, I would, um, I, I, I differ a bit from him. Okay. I think we, issues concerning national identity cards and, and other matters, I wouldn't take them personal, really, because Uganda is a metropolitan society. Right now we have, and you can't tell the difference, by the way. Most people confuse me. They call me, are you Eritrean? When I'm in Ethiopian Airlines, they say, are you Ethiopian? So when we, me myself, I work with government, but when I was going to register for the national AD, I remember I was very cross because the first question, before they asked me what my name was, he actually, I think there were four lines, and he went, what tribe are you? And I was like, is that the first question? But you know, we, 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 grow, we grew up very defensive. So the person who was registering wanted to know really, am I Ugandan? He was quite polite. But because you have that, everybody's asking you, what tribe are you, by the way? Are you Ugandan? So, you become very you're defensive. You're tired of that you, question. Yes, you're tired, you're of, that tired question. of explaining yourself. And then you're like, okay, you get offended. But um, it's a process. National security, I mean. You can't play with it. You can't that. play with it. Yeah. But uh, we, we just have to realize that we also don't love processes. You know, 
people of our nature don't love processes. I work with them and they'll tell you, by the way, I want to get an ID, an ID. Where can I go? And I'm like, go here, go here, go here, then you go here. But also no. maybe, not mm -hmm. to remember Mino's experience when he was getting his ID, mm -hmm. maybe they're afraid of going through what he went through to get his ID. If you remember what he said, they were extremely rude to him, told him, get out and go back to your country. So they, it wasn't, it wa they weren't as polite to him as they were to you. Yes, oh, Mino. Yes, uh, to, to, to supplement on that, uh, I always recall that day, I'll never forget that day, because it was really, be, being a Mchiga and aggressive way I grew up, you have to stand on, on your grounds. I remember speaking all of the Ruchiga I knew, speaking all the Rwandis I knew. This guy was really tough on me, but it was unfortunately, I think as I narrated in the story, there were group, two groups of people. The, these are uh, the people who supported me. They are the people who, who, there are some people who would understand. And I was very surprised to see that the ordinary people were the people who were understanding more. Because uh, I, I did my registration in Muyenga, that is uh, uh, Kisubi, uh, Kisubi side. But those, those people who came and who were, who, whom we looked as, as educated and what, were the people who were saying, no, 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 if, if he's from Kabare, let him go back to Kabare. Then I asked those guys, I said, no, what, what are you, they are also speaking the, 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 language. the, the language. Then I asked now. Why don't you also? Go? Why don't you also? Why <laughs> should I be the different one to go to cover? If you are to give me an ID, you give it me from here. If, if you if you don't, I will not go to cover to get that ID. I'll have to get it from here, so that yeah, then we are not going to give it to you. I said it's okay. Let me let uh, let the authorities get me, imprison me. Then I will tell them my problem. Well, let's let's take yeah. some questions from the studio audience, and I think we'll continue that discussion in our closing mm -hmm. remarks. Yes, you had a question. Very quickly, if we can move that. Well, thank you very much. My name is Michael, and my question goes to Mino. I heard you talk about you are called Bachote. I'd like to know why and the origin of that name. Okay. No, no, the, 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 by, by the way, that, that name was brought out by certain people who would. That, that is an abusive name, by the way. It, is, it comes from the Swahili word called Wanachota Raha. That literally it means they are looking for for pleasures. Wachotaraha. Yeah. This is it. But by the way, if you find someone like me and talk and say like that, that is a very offensive thing. That is how they have, they, they they see us. These are the people who are. They, they look at you when you look at someone. They see they are they are rich. They are always in pleasure. They are always eating well. They can't eat matoke, they can't eat, you, you see, they are always in, in pleasure. They are raha, all, all the time they have raha. So that is, that's where they, 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 it comes what from. What would you prefer to be called? Me, I prefer to be called a mchiga since I grew up from <laughs> there. And, 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 yes, I, that is, I, and I always talk about that. Because uh, it really, even people, my closest friends, the cousins, the who they know me, even if you are talking about Chiga, what they know that they, I appreciate them very much. The people who have really understood me and taken up as a brother, because the majority of my friends are. Ah, but Chiga. Ah, but you Chiga. said ninety-nine percent. Uh, so when they call me that, I'm really. Uh, Let's. We had another question. Well, maybe I should supplement on okay. that a bit. Yes. Um, it's it, that word, the chota, chotara. Chota means. You know, in it's a Kiswahili word, chotara, chota, and then raha means, you know, pleasure, as he says. The reason being that most of the chotaras, as they call them, don't go to school. They want easy life. They, they, as he says, they like eating nicely. They don't like hard life, and that's why you see it's a new phenomena to see them going to boarding schools. When we're growing up, if you are taking your child to school and everybody say, oh my God, why should you take your child to a boarding school to suffer? So that's why you see there is a lot of education imbalance in the, in the society, our society. Rani, what do you prefer to be called? I think, I think I prefer to be called Ugandan, that's it. Well, well somebody <laughs> says, um, 
Luther Lake says, Rani is more like Ethiopian indeed, but Indians from East, I think people just can't deal with the fact that you own most shops in the East. And um, another comment is that the problem is you don't make it easy for Ugandans to get jobs in your companies. Well, those are the thoughts. So just so you know uh, what the thought is. But let's take another short break. You, your looks are very scary right now. We'll <laughs> get back to you when we come back. Brought to you by Star Times. Enjoy digital life. And then such attitudes can be traced to socio-economic factors. When people are disadvantaged, they will lash out at anyone. For instance, you may hear some unemployed youth saying very hateful things to anyone they identify as Munyankole. Apparently, every Munyankole is benefiting from the current regime. And then he also adds that even Indians discriminate among themselves. They have caste systems. Okay. Yes, I think I would prefer to be Ugandan than Indian because the discrimination that Indians put to us is also high. So you're not accepted? You're not accepted here, you're not accepted there. However, you feel more comfortable to be Ugandan. So you'd rather take the insults, Mino, that the Ugandans have thrown at you? Yes, and uh, I would rather take that and I'm used to that. It's part of my <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would rather... They say, there's a saying, say, better the devil you know than the angel you don't know. You said you've never been to India. I've never been to India <laughs> and I've never g got any interest of... of, of, of <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh. Okay. Uh, and I think, uh, despite all this, there are, I think there are some few individuals, but although when I go like to cover, I, I enjoy... Um, I'm comfortable. Most of the people know me. I move around the way. But the challenge came when I came back here. So I think I will, ha I will deal with that but, and stay Ugandan and Muchiga then. But I would also say that these are very isolated cases. Because if Nino's look, case. Yeah, these are very isolated cases whereby you're segregated in society. You know, I think when I get out of Uganda and I'm, I'm moving out with a parliamentary delegation, everybody turns and say, are you Ugandan? Ugandans are not that color, you see? So I find that more discriminatory than when I'm in here. Um, the issue concerning the East and many shops, I think it's just that the Indians are more in the business, business oriented. Ori yes. Yeah, that's why they are. But the issue of um, being cheated, that is a cross. They will look at your skin color and they say, oh, you know what, if I can, no, uh -uh. somebody who, you, uh, we go together and you say, you know what, go back in for me. Because if they see Rani, they will say, okay, on oh, no, sent it. Like the Boda Boda guy yeah, said. Yeah, the Boda Boda, <laughs> yes, so <laughs> that happens. Well, we have some more comments uh, from social media and we can run those on the screen as we continue <coughs> with our conversation. We had a few more questions, yes? I would like to ask, considering the two economies, Uganda and India, don't you think it's better for you to work in India than Uganda? I think working in Uganda is more better because we are Ugandans. We are born Ugandans. I mean, Indians come to Uganda to look for work. So do you think we can get work in India? We'll be Have you been to India? Oh, yes, many times. Do you speak the language? Very little. Yes, I actually speak Kiswahili more, English, and Arabic. Okay. And then I also try speaking Samia. I'm a proud Samia, by the way. Okay. I blend with them more. Okay. The next question. My name is Frido Marinitre. Um, my question goes to both of you. I would like to know if you have families, relatives, or anyone you know in India. Like, if, in case they're in Uganda or you still connect to them? I think uh, looking at our history as Uganda during, I mean, the, the regimes where Indians were sent away from Uganda, remember they didn't go to India. They went to Canada, they went to Europe, America. So most, most people, I should say, they have relatives not in India itself, but in the diaspora. <coughs> 
So you find that we relate more with people in Canada, America, and, and the UK, because that's where our forefathers settled. But however, your origin, you can stress your origin in India. Mino, can you trace your origin? Yes, uh, the last, uh, the last, the, when I tried to trace my origin, the only thing I got was, were papers from my, uh, my grandparents, actually. Uh, I traced my origin to some, some place in southern India called Udapur. Uh, that is, that is the, the, the only thing I know about that. But when it comes to other relatives, as she asked, uh, I have a very a bit, uh, in an extended family. We are all here. We are all scattered around Uganda. Uh, some, some, are in, some are overseas and what, they are in Canada where. But apparently, I don't, I don't have any connection and I don't know anyone in that part of India. But the only people who are, whom I know, the relatives are around, they are the same as me. They are in the same situation. Yeah. Well, do you think it helps to have more people um, like for example, I'll use Sanjay Tan as an example, in positions of power and then maybe it gives more credibility to your stories that we are actually born here, uh, you know, parents were born here and we belong. I think so. It does. It does help quite a lot. Because that's when now society picks up and says, oh, we have our own, we can also be like him. And that gives them morale and sense of belonging. And then... It also helps to blend more with the community. Yeah. Mino, do you think it helps? It helps a lot. As she has said, I won't talk much about that. We know that everything that where you, you have, because today if I had a problem, and I know I have someone who has the same situation like mine, I would go and talk to him and see how he can help me out. Because he will understand more of my problem than, than any other <laughs> person, because any other person or any other person you see, you tell, you just say, ah, you just go, they will see how to do about it. But someone who knows your, your story and problem and has encountered it, it will be fine. Okay. But notwithstanding. Well, well, as you share that, I'd like them to play some graphics that we'd done earlier that also show um, still uh, what people think about this particular subject. Yes, you're saying. Notwithstanding, Ugandan society has been very accommodative. I can say... You don't feel it, like if you're in another society. I mean, it took me long to realize that, oh, I can be called that. In my workplace, I've never been told I'm an Indian, a foreigner, or anything. My name is Rani, and that's what they call me. They don't say, oh, Rani. But sometimes, you know, people joke around and say, Gwemwind, you know? You, they call you that, do but you in a joking way. Do you think it would help if you, give me a Samia name, for example? Nafula. Do you think it would help if you are called Rani Nafula and <laughs> if you was called oh, maybe? Yes. <laughs> I, I think it would, but you see, like, because they don't find it in you, so somebody will tell you, eh, uh, what is your clan? So when they meet me, they ask me, well, you okay? So they want to be, I want to be identified with them. Okay. And by the way, they're very helpful. They always say, that's our own. Well, there's another comment that's coming in from a Mrs. Winnie Okidi, and she'd like to say, Ugandans, um, these people are really Ugandans and we should stop discriminating against them. Also another comment that came in from Mebo Kebirunji and she was saying, I can partially relate having parents from different tribes, but in, in 2018 we need to look at people beyond race and mm -hmm. tribe. And I wanted to ask you, Rani, have yes. you ever been discriminated against? Do you have any incident that you remember? I can, apart from the ID, there was also an incident during the Mavira issue where they were looking for any Asian. But um, mine came as a joke because I was in office and by then my CEO, the clerk to parliament, called me and said, you know what, you're not going to get out of this building because out there you're not going to be known as Rani, but they'll look at you, with this, you'll be identified with your skin color. And that's when I said, oh, danger can come, you know. But um, apart from that, as I say, in Uganda, I have never been discriminated. But when I'm out of Uganda with a parliamentary delegation, they'll always look at me, are you Ugandan? Ethiopia. And that's, uh, they even ask, are you Ugandan? So when I'm in South Africa, they're like, 
I'm, I'll be told, oh, go, go to that line because they can't differentiate. So They're like, I think you're not Ugandan. <laughs> Mino shared a story about how the border uh, guy told him that if we are beating up or killing Indians, we're not leaving you behind. Where do you seek help? I think it's how you also relate with society. Some people are very mean, as I'm saying, self-esteem. Okay, but let's go back to Mino's story. So he says, I'm on this border, we are talking, we're having a conversation, <laughs> and at the end, that's when the guy says, I mean, you can speak the language, but <laughs> if this happens, we are not, you know, you're not going past it. Where does Mino then go and seek help and say, who can help me? If something like the, Ma the Mabira saga, if they came for you, where do you go and say, help? I think we haven't reached that extent, as you say, because most times, even me, when I'm talking to people, I first keep quiet, and then you let the conversation begin. Yeah. Somebody will start, no, no, mkazi, you know, they, they can really insult you. Then you're like, Kale, the moment you mention any Uganda word, everybody say, eh, no, man, you're Uganda. That's what they say. But uh, we haven't yet gone to that stage where we are, we've become, or we are threatened, and we shouldn't say it's there. As I said, Uganda is a metropolitan society. We have blended. I don't call myself, actually to me, when they called me for this show, I was like, really? I have never felt it. But listening to his story, it also depends where you relate from. Yes, do you think yeah. the environment matters? I mean, a lot, yes, it I does. Think, uh, to that, I think now th we are two people now. <laughs> you see, yeah, no, no, I'm not saying that I'm No, we understand, yes. The situation is too. You see, for, for life, what her side is like, the parliament, the home, what she's a woman. Eh? But for me, I'm an a hustle guy. I hustle a lot. <laughs> Let's be frank, I hustle a lot. That's because uh, I pass through the streets, I go, I border, I know the kachip joint where I'll get my morocconi. Everything, you, you see, d d an ordinary life of an ordinary true. Ugandan. So that is where you meet the, the, the biggest challenges. And there are a lot of a lot of people like guys. Believe me, I've I've really gone through hard times getting a job from cover. It was a real. It was not easy, and I'm not going to mention companies or people or what. But though what we have been discussing is that you meet some other people mm -hmm. who really appreciate you. So my current bosses appreciated my work. They saw my work. They don't mind about what, and they appreciated that you are. The person you are, how you not you, uh, what you look like, but uh, not what you look like. But some other will look at you and say, mm. you, you come, yeah. uh, you come to, to, to ask for you. I know you are, you are, we also hustle like any other Uganda. Well, another comment that we have says today's show is one of those that makes one feel both sad and happy. What they feel as racism, we feel as tribalism. Hatred has no color. It's all about how we are brought up and the environment we are brought up in. And our time is fast spent. So I'd like us to, if you could share with us what you'd like us to pick from your story, your circumstances, and go home and think about. Yes. I'll start with you, yes. I think in, in today's, I'm so happy that this show has taken place. I would really want to encourage um, my people, you know, Let's, let's embrace society. We are all one, as he says that it has no color, it has nothing, but we are all, we are all together. And I also wanted to tell you, you will always be accepted if you accept people. So it's a two-way traffic. Yeah. Okay. Mina. Uh, for me, what I want to see maybe in future, the future of my kids and any other half caste person, is that he moves freely in the streets. When the person goes to get a border, when, when the p place is 2,000, let it be 2,000. A guy hopes on a border. I want life to be, my life to be as easy as Mugisha's life. Not in terms of, of that they give me, they give me handouts or what. But when we are hustling together, let's, let's incur the same results. I don't want to do that any other person, maybe my kids or some other person of my, my, my origin comes, goes to, to, to Kirek or to, to Arua Park, maybe wants to get a bag. They, they, they just look at him and say, ah, no, no, no. 
Go, go, hey, Vawan, Vawan, you see, I don't want, like, I want, uh, when you are hustling, because I've been hustling, I know how it takes to, to get that job, I want it also to be easier for us. I want, I, I don't want to be, us to be treated as like royals or what, I just want. The same know, treatment they give they, everybody they, else. They, and if I'm to tell you that I'm Ugandan, then we, we, we talk whatever, because at times you talk to a person in, like, in Uganda, you find them conversing. This guy insists. You talk Luganda, he, rep he replies in English. You talk Luganda, he replies in English. Until now, you say, okay, I give up. Rani, so you, I Rani you had some closing remarks? <laughs> yes, I just want to say that um, it's good to be identified as one of you. You know, that's what I would like to say. About hustling, about, as he says, that... We should also take in jobs that any job we can do, you know, because some of our people will tell you, I can't do that. No, 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 I can't do that. So we also need to, to come out and say, I can do anything. You are different. You're one in a million. As you say, you hustle. Some of them say, no, I can't go to the market and carry the basket. No, you know. And that brings problems. So what I'm trying to say is that you accept society and society accepts you back. We can only hope that society <laughs> accepts you back. Uh, you, you keep saying that you're tear away uh, in your story oh, about how like they that. then decide and say, let me just do that you're tear away. So they drop out of school. And how, what, what needs to be done to stop that, that thinking? That thinking, as she has said, I think one is about a, the personality of a, an individual. Mentors mm. as well. Yeah. You need mentors. You yeah. need mentors. We, 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 we need also, like, uh, uh, encouragement. Like, uh, to encourage the, the youth, the what, the, to, to, to engage in those programs. And when those programs come up, let us also, let them also accept us, not as us those questions that really, because at times someone would go there, maybe like, let's say there is a, an organization that is sponsoring kids to go to India and study engineering. Hmm? This guy you know, goes there, maybe I'm in, uh, let's picture that I'm in my 20s, I go there, I say, okay, I'm here to, to go to India. But that is your home country, <laughs> give chance to Ugandans to go there, you see. I, yes. I think that is the point. So I think they should also accept that in other way. So if they find someone who's who's trying to fit in the society, let them stretch their hands and allow that and person embrace in. us. That oh. is all I ask for. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for coming to share your stories with us on the show. And that brings us to the end of it for us for tonight. Uh, coming up is NTV Weekend Edition with Sheila and Huchi. Keep it NTV. Renew your monthly basic bouquet subscription of 18,000 shillings before it expires. Then enjoy three free days only on Star Times. Enjoy digital life.